The College of DuPage's homecoming was a huge success. We give you the play-by-play -play on last week's celebration. The photography program at the College of DuPage hosted its 16th annual Easter Seals Photography Exhibit. We zoom in and focus on this exhibition. And we serve it up with our Athlete of the Week, women's volleyball player Rory Mannion. All that and more on this edition of Courier TV News. Hi, and thanks for joining us. I'm Justin Sears. The Board of Trustees held two board meetings this week. We get you caught up on what's happening at the Board of Trustees meeting. Chairman Hamilton. Yes. Motion passes. At Tuesday night's special board meeting, trustees voted four to one to terminate Dr. Robert Bruder's employment at the college. Citing evidence of misconduct and mismanagement, the college community came out to discuss this agenda item. Well, it'll help the community an awful lot by giving the students here um, more, better education at lower costs. I think it's an important vote. I think it's going to save the taxpayers some money, we hope. And if not, it's at least setting a precedence that we're not going to allow shenanigans to go on like this all over the place. This is not an isolated incident. Information was presented to the board citing eight specific grounds for termination. The reasons range from poor financial oversight to damaging the college's reputation. This vote is very important. It's very important to our community because it determines the future of this community college. This was the only item on the agenda for the Board of Trustees meeting. Bruder is now the third administrator to be fired this semester. His termination comes just weeks after finance officials Lynn Sepeda and Thomas Glazier. Within 24 hours of his termination, Dr. Bruder filed a lawsuit against those voting members of the board for wrongful termination. At Thursday's meeting, the board got back to the business of governing the college. They were presented with information on the foundation's gifts and grants report, as well as in-kind donations. The college's financial statements were also presented at that meeting. The next Board of Trustees meeting will be on Thursday, November 5th at 7 p.m. For all the latest college news and events, log on to The Courier newspaper at codcourier.org. The College of DuPage released an October 15th letter and an accompanying 45-page report from the Higher Learning Commission. It's an accreditation agency which stated COD does not meet two core components of the Commission's criteria for accreditation and that the Higher Learning Commission has concerns about how COD meets four other core components of the criteria. The HLC identified serious concerns over well-known issues at College of DuPage, such as credit assignments at the Suburban Law Enforcement Academy, linkages between College of DuPage Foundation board members, and more than $200 million in non-competed construction contracts on campus, spending and lack of financial controls at the now-closed Waterleaf restaurant. Other irregularities include the COD internal audits, a string of thefts from the college's radio station, and the investment of more than $160 million of college funds contrary to board policy, resulting in the loss of more than $2 million in taxpayer funds. The HLC's letter says the finding that COD does not meet two criteria could lead to sanctions, including possibly probation, or the lesser sanction of notice. Nothing in the HLC's letter implicates COD's accreditation in the foreseeable future. The college is now requesting a 60-day extension for their formal response. The Student Leadership Council participated in a day of action this week, joining over 300 students across the state opposing the drastic budget cuts to Illinois' higher education. COD students held signs that read, I need Illinois higher education because, and wrote their individual responses. They then posed for photos with their signs. These photos will be used to bring awareness to the issue of how Illinois' lack of budget for year 2016 affects students. The second annual homecoming celebration took place last week at COD. We pass the story to reporter Nicole Bauer as she catches all of the campus activities. From balloon hats to ring toss, homecoming week had a carnival, bouncy houses, free food, face painting, and of course, football. <laughs> the chaparrales fell short with a 13-20 loss to the Iowa Reavers for the homecoming game. COD put up quite a fight with two touchdowns, but couldn't keep the Reavers at bay when kicker Casey Bednarski missed the field goal late in the fourth quarter. One COD player was ejected from the game after a head-on collision. The Reavers ended the game by getting a touchdown in the final minutes. 
Members of the football team have been volunteering every Monday night this season with the Western DuPage Special Recreation Association athletes as they prepare for the Special Olympics. During halftime at Monday's night game, the COD Gritters will honor all of the WDSRA Special Olympians. Kickoff is at 7 p.m. when our Chaparral football team welcomes Olivet Nazarene to Bjarni Ulswick Stadium. COD's photography program hosted its 16th annual Easter Seals photography exhibit on Thursday night. Over 20 children from Easter Seals of DuPage and Fox Valley were featured in the exhibition. For the last 16 years, the photography department has partnered with Easter Seals to showcase the beauty and daily lives of children with special needs. We have a great partnership with Easter Seals. For the last uh, 16 years, my photojournalism students have been paired with an Easter Seals family and used their visual storytelling skills to chronicle the life of an, a you know, child with a disability. And what it's been is a wonderful final project for my students where they've been able to raise awareness about you know, what it's like to have a child with a disability and um, learn some important communication skills. Since the first exhibit in 2000, the event has been growing and continues to bring great happiness and awareness to the special needs community. All photos on display at this event will be brought to the Villa Park Center and hung in the lobby. For more information on the Easter Seals Photography Exhibit, please contact Terry Vitaco at vitaco at cod.edu. With nearly 30,000 students attending the College of DuPage, parking continues to be an issue. Students at the college still struggle to find available parking. Well, if you have a class in like around like 10 or 11, uh, it's really hard to find a parking spot. And there's uh, not, not enough for us, uh, how many students are here. With students speaking up about the issue at hand, college officials respond with alternative solutions to help with the parking situation. Premium parking really increased a uh, lot of uh, flow on the, on the space because as you can see, uh, with the premium parking, you always see the empty lot there. And by now, you don't see that. So the, I think that's a big improvement. For more information about parking availability and alternatives, visit the College of DuPage website. Scholarship applications for spring 2016 are now open. Eligibility varies, as does the amount of each scholarship. Students are strongly encouraged to apply for scholarships through the College of DuPage or outside resources. For more information on scholarship opportunities, please visit the scholarship website at www.cod.edu scholarships. Deadline for spring scholarship applications is Sunday, November 1st. This is the last weekend to see the college theater performance of Carmilla, directed by Amelia Barrett. Predating Dracula by more than 25 years, Carmilla was first published in 1871 and is one of the earliest works of vampire fiction. Performances of Carmilla will be Thursday through Saturday at 8 p.m. and Sunday at 3 p.m. Tickets for the show are $14. For tickets or more information, call 630-942-4000 or visit atthemac.org. College of DuPage volleyball player Rory Mannion is our Athlete of the Week. CNTV sports reporter Antoine Ward sits down with this star athlete to find out more about her on and off the court passions. My name is Rory Mannion and I'm an outside hitter for the COD volleyball team. She's the leader. Uh, she's the first one here. Uh, she sets our competitive balance at practice and we really go with her so uh, everything starts with Rory in my opinion. Rory Mannion is by all means a leader but she won't let you call her that. I am a captain of this team but I wouldn't say a leader we're all as one on the team I'd say and we're just representing COD to our best. Coming from Florida Atlantic to COD Rory brings something special to the team. A work ethic, character, parenting, all the stuff that you read about. I mean, it's just all there for her, and she's very passionate about this sport. When she's not on the court, she's just a regular student. I like hanging out with my family, you know, walking my dog. <laughs> um, I like to play basketball as well, so I sometimes do that outside and just, you know, the usual, I guess. <laughs> when she's on the court, what drives her is her team, which is fairly new to COD. Uh, just playing to the best abilities that I can for my team and, you know, just making my family proud. The team practices every day and their reputation is one to be matched. We're very competitive, uh, at least for my first year, much better than I was expecting. Uh, 
We have a really good chance at winning regionals here next week. It'll be on Halloween. Um, it's a four-team race and we're at home. We've played the other three teams ahead of us very tough. They know it. They know they have to come here and beat us. I don't think any of them are looking forward to doing it, and we're looking forward to beating them. So it should be a dogfight here on Halloween. Watch Rory and her team at regionals here at College of DuPage. This is Antoine Ward with Curia TV Sports. And we wouldn't be able to end this newscast without discussing one of the week's biggest pop culture stories. Star Wars tickets went on sale. Good luck getting tickets for the new Star Wars film. <laughs> Pre-sales began Monday night after the debut of the final trailer. They're expected to sell out at light speed. Were any COD students lucky enough to get their hands on one of these tickets? Yes, I did get tickets to see Star Wars. I'll be seeing it on the Friday night in IMAX 3D. Sadly, no, and at this point it feels like it's going to be months until you'll actually be able to see the movie. I wasn't able to get any tickets for Star Wars. I mean, I didn't even really know that they were on sale until the day after. Planning on getting them, but I feel like it's, a lot of them are sold out. Star Wars The Force Awakens opens around the world on December 18th. Thanks for joining us for this week's Courier TV News. Please tune in next week as we continue to connect you to the community with more College of DuPage news. Have a great weekend.